Well, good evening, game fans. And uh, today, in tonight's episode of Working on Mr. Peabody, I once again did a little bit of work behind the scenes while I was not on video with you guys. And I just basically updated the graphics of some of the things I had in the game. So that wasn't difficult. Um, what I did was I upgraded the ground and uh, the tree. Oh, and I just fell off. And I also made like this background boulder graphic. And that's pretty easy for the tree, which I had another graphic before. All I did was go into my sprites folder and I deleted the tree 01 that I had from before. And I just replaced it with my new tree 01. And then within the game, everything popped and came right into place. I didn't have to worry about changing any code. So today, what I want to do is I want to start adding some sound because that's just what I feel like doing tonight is adding some sound and, you know, starting to get that feeling in here with some sound in the game. And I've kind of um, already found some sounds that I want to use. And just to let you know where I found the sounds, um, I happen to use freesound.org. You do have to like log in with an email account, but it's free. And then what you basically would do is you just type a search word and, you know, like um, my guy's walking on grass. So I typed in the search word grass. And then when I come back, it's just uh, it says that there's 838 sounds regarding the grass and you could listen to one of them. And if you want to download it, you click on it and then you go to the sound you can see it again over here. And then you just say download and you know, you would give it a name and pick where you want it to go. So that's where I got some of the sounds. And then um, after I got the sounds, sometimes I may want to edit the sound. So for example, over here is a sound of some footsteps. And then um, for editing the sounds, I'm using a software called Audacity which is free and it's very powerful software for sound. And maybe you heard of it before, but you go to online and you look up Audacity to download and it's, it's not that big, it's free. And you could do things here like um, pick the sound, parts of the sound and you could add effects to it like echo, uh, preview the echo. And you can actually put the echo in there and do effects and stuff like that. And then um, the other thing is whatever the sound type was that you read it in for, you could export it as an MP3, a wave, you know, all these different types if you wanted to change the type. So that's about getting sounds. Um, so I did get some sounds. Now, uh, what I usually do in my games is I load the sounds with a function to the game objects. And then that way, if a user wants to, or if I want to change the sounds as I'm going along making the game, I could go ahead and change the sounds. So to load the sounds from script, the sounds need to be placed in a folder called resources. And the resources folder has to be right at the assets level. So here I am at the assets level in my project and I'm going to add a new folder, create a folder and I'll call it resources. And let me name that right resources. Okay. So anything in the resources folder you could load from um, your script. So in here, I'm going to put some of the sounds that I found and right off to start with, I want to have some sound of my character walking. So let's see what I have here is this sound. Let me just listen to it. I don't know if you can hear it. It's real subtle and it's also kind of slow, but let me bring that into my resources folder and let me try to get these screens here so I could see them both at the same time. Here we go. So this is feet on the ground. I'll put that in there. And um, I have a sound for when I jump up. Let me put that in there. And a sound for when I land from the jump. And um, 
okay, I could put in some level music. And this sound over here, the guitar slide, uh, I'm using it for like when I when I die. <laughs> All right, so just to start off with, those are some sounds that I'm just going to put in to begin with for my bag of tricks over here. And now that I have those sounds in my resource folder, I could play them to hear them. Or this one. Or jumping up. So now just to apply them to Mr. Peabody, um, well, there's a number of ways you could do this. One way is, let me shrink this up. One way is you could take the sound and drag and drop it onto your character like this. And then you'll see like the audio clip will come in. And you have settings for it, like play on a way, you can loop and everything like that. But I'm going to do it from the code from behind the scenes. So let me just remove that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll open up the script. And in the script, I'm going to have it that um, you as the and the Unity interface could um, give it the names of the sounds you want to use. All right, so let me just shrink this code down to the definitions. OK, so here we have public variables. I'm going to have a couple of sounds for Mr. Peabody. So what I'm going to do, this region command is just a way to add some code where it, it kind of collapses. I'm just going to make a section of code that collapses. And this is where I'm between my helper, helper objects, and region. OK, and uh, so I'm going to make a type over here to hold the, um, the names for all the different sounds. So this will be public struck uh, sounds. Let's see how that works. Sound sound names. Um, sound files <laughs> names file names. Okay. Um, and then within it, I'll have a variable for the move sound. So. Um, this I have one is move. Oh, it's going to be a public string move, and then I'll have one for public. Uh, la 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 la. Public string move, and what else there? Jump. Public string the jump file name. Public string the land file name and public string the um i guess it's i guess we're gonna call it uh die the die sound okay so i have four sounds in this structure and now what i'm gonna do over here is in this to to expose to the inspector window in unity i'll make a public of the sound file name structure and I'll just call this sound names okay now let's see how that works now that I have this public sound file name sound names when I go to unity make sure I save the file all right now I'm going to go back to unity it's going to just process that change and here's the Peabody script and um something it didn't show uh, what's up what's up i don't have any errors what am i missing okay so this is a public struct these are public strings and then this is a public sound file name of that object why isn't this showing in the inspector hmm no it's just not showing sanity check time public class oh i think i know why i just turn it back to a struct i have to make this uh serializable object so that it could be saved and what is the syntax for that mm -mm. let me resort to the internet again um Unity serializable 
fields and the interface. And I kind of, I always forget the syntax, but it is, is it serialized field? <laughs> Let's try that. Serialize. It does it. Oh, it knows what that is now. Is that going to work? Now that this is a serializable field, then will it show in the inspector? Oh, no, hold on. Let me figure this out. Um, let's try something else. System that's serializable. System serializable. I think that's the one. So let me save that. And now let's see when the script reads it. And there you go. So here's my structure sound names. And since I said it was system.serializable, and I made a public variable for it. Now it shows, and I can give the name for each sound. So all I have to do is, let me just look in the resources folder here for the names. So for my moving sound, I'll say feet on the ground. Okay. And for the jump, I'm gonna say jump up is the sound. I want it to load, jump up. And for the land, I'll say jump land. And for the die, it's the guitar slide. Okay, so guitar slide. So all I'm doing here is telling my script the names of the sound files in the resources folder. Now inside my script, I'm gonna have to use those names to actually load the sounds. So I guess I could use the same structure, but these are public to show, and then I'll have these as private. No, well, they still got to be public, but hide in inspector means that these will be public, but they won't show in the inspector. And this will be audio source for um, sound move. Mm. Hide. Okay, let's do that again. Hide an inspector for public audio, audio source, sound jump. Hide an inspector, public audio source, sound land, do, 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 and one more. Hide in inspector, public audio source, sound die. Okay, now I need another function here that's going to load the sounds for me. And, well, you know, I don't remember everything, so I'm going to go to my website here, overvision.com, and I'm going to look in the, here in my download section, I got some scripts that I commonly use. Here's a function, create auto, audio source. So let me just copy that. Okay, goodbye. And here in the Mr. Peabody, I'm just gonna add that function down here. Bingo, create audio source. And what it does is it takes the name of the file. And the first thing it does here is it adds an audio source component to the Mr. Peabody game object and then it loads an audio clip. You see here's the resources.load and this function needs the file that it's going to load to be in the resources folder. And what am I going to load? An audio clip. And that's the name of the of the file. So then this would return audio clip object and my audio source will get its sound. And then I just return the audio source. So in the start function, to use that there, um, here's where I'm initializing a bunch of stuff, and then I'll also initialize my sounds. So let me change this from sound names to just plain old sound. Apply. And doing that is means that over here, this guy's going to get wiped out. Sound. Okay, so the move sound is feet on ground. The jump sound is jump up. 
the land sound is jump land and the die sound is guitar slide all right I had to do that twice but that's okay let me just apply that to my prefab game object go back to my script and now here I have the four sounds sound dot the first one is move sound move equals create audio source and I have to give it the name of the file so it's sound dot move okay and then sound dot sound jump equals create audio source sound dot jump and then sound dot land equals same thing create audio source you're getting the hang of this right <laughs> So for each sound, I'm going to load. And then the last sound I have is sound.die equals create audio source sound.die. So that loads my four sounds. And let's see. And that means now that they're loaded, I should be able to play them. So just for testing, I'm going to play the first sound, sound dot sound die dot play so when the game starts i should hear that sound play one time okay just to see that the sounds are loading properly so here i go i press play there so at least the die sound loaded so we know that's working now we just got it now that the sounds are loaded, oh, I should have shown you another thing. Let me press play over here. And this is the this is the Mr. Peabody object. And those scripts actually loaded all those sounds. See, here's an audio source with the audio clip that says none. This one says jump up. This one says jump land. This one says guitar slide. So one of them did not load. That was this first one over here. It has none. And... That's supposed to be feet on ground. Did I type it incorrectly? Let's see. Oh, well, I don't have to look there. I just have to look in my Mr. Peabody script. Mr. Peabody script. I spelled, I spelled fet on ground. Feet on ground. All right. Let me save that. And save project. And let me just... Save this prefab again since I changed it. All right, so now if I try this, and I think the sounds, all four of them should load. So let's see, where's my, um, here we go. Feet on ground is the first one. Jump up got loaded and jump land got loaded and guitar slide. All right, that's my four sounds. So why did I hear the sound I play though I don't know hmm. uh, I'll figure that out in a moment now what I want to do is play the move sound like when I move back and forth so that's gonna happen here in the update function when I'm doing the move control so here is move is true I should play the sound and move is false I should stop playing the move sound so here the move animation's playing, and I should play sound move dot play. Okay, but um, every time the play command happens, it kind of starts playing the sound from the beginning of the sound. So what I want to do is first check to see if sound move dot. Oh, okay, it's sound dot sound move dot is playing. First, I have to check to see if it is playing equals false before I actually tell it to play. So it doesn't like start playing it from the beginning again. Okay. So here, if sound move isn't playing, then play it. And over here, if I'm not moving, so this would be if sound dot sound move dot is playing equals true, then go ahead and tell sound to not play sound move dot stop okay so if I'm moving play the sound if I'm not moving stop the sound well let's see what happens let's go ahead and play the game 
Okay. So here we go. The game is playing. Now I'm going to move. And the sound is playing, but it's like, it's too slow compared to the speed of his feet. So what I'm going to do is increase the speed of this sound. Urgh. Now if I do it in script, that kind of, that's no good. I'm going to have to do it from Audacity, all right? Because if I do it in script, and if I change the sound to something else, then the script's going to keep changing the speed, and, you know, that's that's not going to work. So let's do it in, in Audacity, and I'm going to speed up the sound there. So feet on the ground here, and I think I could right-click and say da-da-da. No, can I double-click on it? Yeah, I double click on it and it'll open up in the default sound editor, which I made mine Audacity. If yours does Windows Media Player, then uh, you just have to set the default to Audacity in your um, browser, in your Windows Explorer. Anyway, here's a sound. And let me play it again. It's kind of low, so maybe I could also make it a little bit louder. So I'm going to go to Effect, Amplify and amplification um what does this do this is making it less this is making it greater why does it not let me press ok maybe there's another effect i could use here um effect <laughs> compressor fade in fade out and normalize normalize um, this, what's it going to do? It makes it normalized and it got a little bit louder. So now let me hear that. So now the problem is this sound is going slower than my feet are tapping. So I want to increase the speed. So that would be speed. Um, all right. So a percent change, making it go faster, 25% faster. Let me hear what that sounds like with a preview. Even faster, I think. Even faster, I think, when I'm looking at his feet, they kind of go faster. Let me try that. So I'll say OK. Then I'll say File. I'm going to export it as a WAV file. And um, this is my little folder, my little bag of tricks folder here. And I'll call this feed on ground faster. I don't want to overwrite the original one just yet. Now I'm going to close that. OK. And now my bag of tricks over here is in this folder in the Peabody. And I should see feed on ground faster. Let me put that in there. Bam, faster and louder. All right, so let me get rid of this original one, delete. And let me just rename this one to feed on ground, take off the faster part. All right, so now this name is still the same, feed on ground. It's still the same for right here, feed on ground. So now I'm gonna press play. Now I'm going to see how that sounds. Eh, I guess so. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute. There's one thing. It's moving when I'm touching the ground. But if I'm not touching the ground, it shouldn't play. So let's look over here. So here... Here's I'm moving the move controls, which I could be doing when I'm jumping, but I don't want it to play if I'm in the air. So how do we fix this? First of all, I have to be able to detect when I'm in the air. And over here, that's done with this. If jump is false, then I could do a jump else. That means I'm not jumping. Whew. All right, so let's just say if I do jump, oh God. All right, let's think here. So for sound, um, here I'm moving horizontally. 
but this has to be false. I can't be jumping. So let me copy and say, um, if sounds playing is false and this is the and sign to do two ifs. So here's one if statement that this has to be true and this statement has to be true too for me to get inside the if. So this is saying if the current animation is not jump, then I could play the sound. Then over here, as soon as I do a jump, I should stop the sound. Um, boo -boo, I do a jump. So sound should stop for walking. Okay, now let's see what happens when I press play. So here we go. I think it's working. At least it's working good, good enough for now. So now let's add a sound for when I jump up. So if the move sound is playing, then stop it. Um, but this only is going to happen when I press a button. Um, so I don't think I need the if around it. I'll just tell it to stop. And another thing, paste. And then the sound I want to play over here is sound dot sound jump dot play. Okay. So if I jump up, it's going to play the jump sound. Urgh. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Always let's see what happens. Here we go. Press play. And there we go. Oh, it's coming along. Oh, there's only one thing though. It's pressing that jump sound every time I press the button. It should only uh, do that when I actually could jump. So let me put that in inside the if statement, just like when the jump animation happens. Let me put it in here. Okay, there we go. Boom. Now let's see what happens. A little adjustment. Press play and jump. Okay, now it doesn't matter if I press it multiple times, it only presses one time. Now we're gonna add the sound for landing. So I think I made a function for that landing from jump. Let's outline collapse and look for the landing from jump function. Okay, this says if we are in the jump animation, then we're gonna do the land animation. Da -da 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 -da. And over here, I guess we could do sound dot sound land dot play. Okay, now let's press play. Ah, it's working, buddy. Now for the kind of like the more difficult one to know when we die. Ah, that's what we want to sound right there when we fall. Now, how do we know when we're falling to our death and we're not just falling from a jump? Whew, let's think about that. Mm. Well, we could be falling from our death if we pass this bottom line here. You know, like if we look in our scene and if... Mr. Peabody passes this bottom line, he is falling to his death. All right, so we could say when Mr. Peabody has passed this bottom line, he is definitely dying. And that, that could be a quick hack workaround right now. So here we go in the update function. And we could say, Jump, control, camera control. Let's just add something over here. Um, die detect. 
detection <laughs> and we'll say if uh, this the mr. P body game object transform dot position dot y is the up and down is less than what less than what bing bing then we will say you're dying sound dot die sound dot sound die dot play okay so what is that position let's look at the screen here and let's look at mr peabody's transform right here he's at a minus 3.35 and if i were to drag him to this point that's like the lowest point there i could say is a minus 4.5 all right we could we could try that minus 4.5 all right but we should well let's just hard code it because 4.5 I'm sure that there's plenty of other ways that he's going to die other than coming past this point. But this one's going to be um, die from fall from drop detection. Okay, then we're going to play that sound. Um, here we go. We'll press play again. Mm -hmm. Running. And here's an opportunity to die. Let's miss the log on purpose. Oh, see, that's what happens if I don't put if the sound is playing. Because right here, I just put when it's less than to just play over and over again. And you heard how the sound was just choppy. See, I was just testing you guys. I left that on on purpose. So here, <laughs> sound, that sound, die, dot is playing equals false. Then go ahead and do the um, sound die sound. Okay, oops, and copy, cut, paste. And doot, there you go, save, and here we go. Ready? Let's try it. It's running. Cool. All right, so we started adding some sound. Oh, there's one more sound I want to add. Level music. So level music is basically going to be like music playing for the game. This one's real easy. It's just some background music. So I'm not going to add this to Mr. Peabody. I'm going to add it to the level object. And this one, I'm not going to use my create script thing. I'm just going to drag and drop the level music and put it right here on level. And I'm going to have it play on awake and I'm going to have it loop. All right. So now, if I press play, you can have some background music. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's basically playing a little beat. All right, so um, there you go. I mean, we got a lot of stuff functioning here. We could actually try to make some interesting level, um, but in the next video, I'll, I'll think of some more stuff we could add, like uh, maybe up here in the sky, we could have some clouds floating around, maybe some birds flying, just like some more life to the scene for us to interact with and see as we're playing the game. And also, we still haven't added any enemies. So look forward to, stay tuned, and look forward to the next video. Thank you very much.